Hey guys, welcome to the Vendor Master Maintenance instructional video for Eclipse. This section will teach you how to enter, view and edit suppliers in Eclipse. This section is essential if you plan on entering accounts payable or petty cash. If this is your first time entering an Eclipse, it is recommended that you watch this video along with the other videos in the Eclipse Accounts Payable tutorial series. Ok, so let's get started. This is the main window you should be looking at in Eclipse. Any task you need to perform can be found using the main menu bar drop down menus. For Accounts Payable, you will be mostly using the Accounts Payable menu. For this video we will be using the Vendor Master Maintenance window, which can be found under the Accounts Payable menu. This is where all your vendors are stored. You can sort by any column you wish by clicking on the appropriate header. One click and a plus sign will appear, showing you that the column is sorted in ascending order. Click again and you will get a minus sign telling you that the column is sorted in descending order. Vendor lines that are listed in a black colour are active vendors that can have transactions posted against them. Vendors listed in bright red were once active vendors but have been deactivated, so you will no longer be able to post against them. Vendor currency is the currency in which that vendor is paid in. If you have a vendor that can be paid in different currencies, you will need to create a separate vendor for each currency with a unique vendor code and name. AudioLink has had two records created as they can be paid through their British Pound or their Euro company. I find that listing the currency in the vendor name for duplicate vendors such as these makes it easier for people to select the correct vendor and it fulfills the requirement that the vendor name is unique. Vendor type tells you what type of vendor the record is. C stands for accounts payable, R stands for accounts receivable, P for petty cash and A for payroll agent. Now you can either scroll through the list looking for the vendor manually or you can utilize the search function. To use the search bar, make sure that the list is first sorted by how you want to search. For this example we will be searching by vendor name, so I first make sure the list is sorted by vendor name. See how the header has a plus sign and the column is listed in the dark red color. We know that the vendors are sorted in ascending vendor name order. Now enter the first couple of letters of the vendor name that you are searching for and then click tab on your keyboard. The list will now advance to the relevant records. Next, click on the record you wish to view, making sure it's highlighted. You can then utilize any of the top tabs to view the vendor's invoices or checks. Or if you use the document scanning feature in iEclipse, you will be able to view attachments related to the vendor by clicking on the attachments tab. Now let's go ahead and enter a new vendor. First make sure that the vendor name doesn't already exist using the search feature we just discussed. When you are satisfied that this is in fact a new vendor, click the insert button. First assign the vendor a vendor code. Most accountants use the system of the first four digits of the company name followed by 01. So for this example, it will be entering Acton Stationers, so the code I would use is ACTI01. If that code already exists, you will also be notified by the system at the time of saving that vendor code and that you need to assign a unique vendor code. At that point, you would just change 01 to 02 and so on until the code becomes unique. Next, enter the currency you will be paying the vendor in. Then select if this is an accounts payable or petty cash vendor. Next, enter the company name. At this stage, it is important to really inspect the invoice if you have it and make sure you, you are using the correct company name. Often, vendors have a different business and limited company names. For check name, enter the name to be printed on the remittance, which should usually be the same as the limited company name. For address, you will notice that you have two tabs, one for postal address, the other for company address. 
if your production uses EasyPO, the company address will automatically be populated from whatever address the crew member used to draft the PO with. The posted address should be the full company address listed on the invoice. If you have the invoice, you can enter the postal address now. When you leave the postal address blank at the PO entering stage, that will ensure that you get a pop-up warning message at the invoice entry stage reminding you to enter the company's address. Now if you are entering just a PO, I would stop here and save the vendor and then carry on entering the purchase order. If you are entering an invoice or petty cash batch, I would continue in this section completing the rest of the vendor details. Now click on the Tax Details tab. For this section, I select the tax code that is applicable to this vendor. If you aren't sure what the appropriate tax code is for the vendor, it's best to ask the accountant. Now, if you have an invoice, enter the tax ID or also called VAT registration number. For Bank Details tab, enter the abbreviation for the vendor's bank, the sort code and the account number. The account name is usually the same as the limited company name. Some vendors list their bank account name on their invoice. If they do list their bank account name on their invoice and it differs greatly from their limited company name, that can be a red flag and the invoice should be brought to the accountant's attention. If the bank details are not listed on the invoice, I would always go back to the vendor and ask that they either add it to the invoice or provide you another official document with the bank details listed on it. The only other tab I would complete is the contact details tab. If you have the invoice and it lists an email address in which to send the remittances, you would enter that here and check this box. These are all the sections that I would complete in the vendor details windows. Click OK once you're all done and the details will be saved. You can see that the vendor has now appeared in the main Vendor Master Maintenance window. Click Exit and you will be brought back to the main window. OK, this is all for the Eclipse video on Vendor Master Maintenance. From here, you are now ready to enter purchase orders, invoices or petty cash.